anions are negatively charged molecules. So in space, we observe a lot of molecules, surprisingly, because interstellar space uh, is uh, very tenuous in density and very cold most of the time. And yet, some molecules survive here despite uh, the ultraviolet radiation from the stars. So the molecules we observe are relatively small, but some can be a bit larger. Most molecules are neutral. That means they have the same number of protons and electrons distributed in all the atoms. Some of the molecules are ions. And ions are produced essentially because you have a cosmic ray which comes close to mostly an H2 molecule and it takes away an electron and then the molecule H2 becomes H2 plus which starts to react. So you have a number of molecules which are ions but these are mostly positive ions because these cosmic rays are taking away some electrons. And for example, one of the most important ions in astrophysical chemistry is the H3 plus ion, which results from H2 plus, plus the reaction with molecular hydrogen, which is the most abundant molecule in space. And you have another molecule, which is HCO plus, a very important ion, which is the reaction of this ion HC3 H3 plus, plus CO, which is the most common molecule after H2. Okay, I won't say more about different molecules, just to say that we naturally explain why you have some positive ions in space. And the fact that you discover some negative ions, that means some molecules where there is an extra electron, came out as a surprise. And in fact, you can form that in the following way. That means you have one electron which comes close to a molecule and it is caught. But it's very difficult to stabilize this molecule. So you have to emit a photon to take the energy away. Because contrary to what happened in our atmosphere or in our laboratory, there are no surfaces, no dust grains or very few dust grains. And uh, the density is too small to get some ternary collisions. That means collision between three different cores. That means an electron and two different molecules at the same time. So you have to evacuate the energy and it is radiated. So this is a very important process which is very difficult. And we use it to explain the abundance of a number of molecules in space which are a bit complicated and that we don't know how to explain otherwise. So if you do that, uh, you see that anions are one form of molecule formed by this radiative attachment of one electron process with emission of a photon to evacuate the energy. And uh, in that case, we observe anions in particular in some special environments like the envelope which is expanding and which has been blown up by some stars, all stars. And with time, you can see that the gas is expanding. And this is a real clock. If you can measure the distance of a molecule, or a type of molecule in the envelope, with respect to the central star, you know you have a time clock. Because if one molecule is here, another one a little bit further out, that means one formed before the other one. And since you expect that the anions will form by a slow radiative attachment reaction on the neutral species, which corresponds, then if you measure the distance between the two species, you can calculate what is the rate of radiative attachment. And these type of rates are extremely difficult to measure in the laboratory. So in summary, I mean, some people say anions are good for your health, I think. Uh, uh, it is what I understood in a trip in China. Uh, but they are interesting species for understanding the chemistry of the most common molecules that we observe.